सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक ऑफ हिस्ट्री फॉर क्लास सिक्स इन टाइटल आर पास वन पेज नंबर फिफ्टी सेवन चैप्टर नंबर सिक्स टाइटल न्यू क्वेश्चन एंड आइडियाज अनाघाज स्कूल ट्रिप दिस वॉज द फर्स्ट टाइम अनाघा वॉज गोइंग ऑन अ स्कूल ट्रिप They boarded the train from Pune in Maharashtra late at night to go all the way to Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh. Her mother, who came to see her off at the station, told the teacher, "Do tell the children about the Buddha, and take them to see Sarnath as well." The story of the Buddha. Siddhartha, also known as Gautama, the founder of Buddhism, was born about two thousand five hundred years ago. This was a time of rapid change in the lives of people. As you saw in Chapter Five, some kings in the Mahajanpadas were growing more powerful. New cities were developing, and life. was changing in the villages as well see chapter 9 many thinkers were trying to understand these changes in society they also wanted to try and find out the true meaning of life the buddha belonged to a small gana known as the sakya gana and was a kshatriya when he was a young man he left the comforts of his home in search of knowledge he wandered for several years meeting and holding discussions with other thinkers he finally decided to find his own path of realization and meditated for days on end under a peepal tree at bodh gaya in bihar where he attained enlightenment after that he was known as the buddha or the wise one he then went to sarnath near varanasi where he taught for the first time he spent the rest of his life traveling on foot going from place to place teaching people till he passed away in kusinara page number 58 The Buddha taught that life is full of suffering and unhappiness. This is caused because we have cravings and desires which often cannot be fulfilled. Sometimes even if we get what we want we are not satisfied and we want even more or want other things. The Buddha described this as thirst or tanha. He taught that this constant craving could be removed by following moderation in everything. He also taught people to be kind and to respect the lives of others including animals. He believed that results of our actions called karma whether good or bad affect us both in this life and the next the buddha taught in the language of the ordinary people prakrit so that everybody could understand his message what was the language used to compose the vedas he also encouraged people to think for themselves rather than to simply accept what he said let us see how he did this on this page a picture is shown this is the stupa at sarnath this building known as a stupa was built to mark the place where the buddha first taught his message you will learn more about the stupas in chapter 11 page number 59 the story of kisa gautami 
There is a famous story about the Buddha. Once, there was a woman named Kisagotami, whose son had died. She was so sad that she roamed through the streets of the city carrying the child with her, asking for help to bring him back to life. A kind man took her to the Buddha. The Buddha said, Bring me a handful of mustard seeds and I will bring your child back to life. Kisa Gautami was overjoyed and started off at once. But Buddha gently stopped her and added, The seeds must come from the house of a family where nobody has died. Kisa Gautami went from door to door. But wherever she went, she found out that someone or the other, father, mother, sister, brother, husband, wife, child, uncle, aunt, grandfather, grandmother, had died. What was the Buddha trying to teach the sorrowing mother? Six Schools of Indian Philosophy Over centuries, India's intellectual exploration of truth has come to be represented by six systems of philosophy. These are known as Vaisheshik, Nyay, Sankhya, Yog, Purva Mimansa and Vedanta or Uttar Mimansa. These six systems of philosophy are said to have been founded by sages Kanad, Gautam, Kapil, Patanjali, Gemini, and Vyas, respectively. These philosophies still guide scholarly discourse in the country. German-born British Indologist Frederick Max Müller has observed that the six systems of philosophy were developed over many generations with contributions made by individual thinkers. However, today we find an underlying harmony in their understanding of truth, although they seem distinct from each other. Upanishads Around the time that the Buddha was preaching and perhaps a little earlier, other thinkers also tried to find answers to difficult questions. Some of them wanted to know about life after death. Others wanted to know why sacrifices should be performed. Many of these thinkers felt that there was something permanent in the universe that would last even after death. They described this as the Atma or the individual soul and the Brahma or the universal soul. They believed that ultimately both the Atma and the Brahma were one. Many of their ideas were recorded in Upanishads. These were part of the later Vedic texts. Upanishad literally means approaching and sitting near and the texts contain conversations between teachers and students. Often, ideas were presented through simple dialogue. Page number 60 The Wise Beggar Here is a dialogue based on a story from one of the most famous Upanishads, the Chandogya Upanishad. Shonak and Abhipratarin were two sages who worshipped the universal soul. 
Once, as they sat down to eat, a beggar came and asked for some food. We cannot spare anything for you, Shonak said. Learned sirs, whom do you worship? The beggar asked. The universal soul? Abhipratarin replied. Ah, it means that you know that the universal soul fills the entire world. Yes, yes, we know that. The sages nodded. If the universal soul fills the whole world, it fills me too. Who am I? But a part of the world, the beggar asked. You speak the truth, O young Brahmin. Then, O sages, by not giving me food, you are actually denying food to the universal soul. The sages realized the truth of what the beggar said and shared their food with him. How did the beggar convince the sages to share their food with him? Most Upanishadic thinkers were men, especially Brahmins and Rajas. Occasionally, there's a mention of women thinkers such as Gargi, who was famous for her learning and participated in debates held in royal courts. Poor people rarely took part in these discussions. One famous exception was Satyakam Jabal, who was named after his mother, the slave woman, Jabali. He had a deep desire to learn about reality, was accepted as a student by a Brahmin teacher named Gautam and became one of the best known thinkers of the time. Many of the ideas of the Upanishads were later developed by the famous thinker Shankaracharya, about whom you will read in class 7. Page number 61 Panini, the grammarian This was also the time when other scholars were at work. One of the most famous was Panini, who prepared a grammar for Sanskrit. He arranged the vowels and consonants in a special order and then used these to create formula like those found in algebra. He used these to write down the rules of the language in short formula, around 3,000 of them. Jainism The last and 24th Tirthankar of the Jains, Vardhaman Mahavir, also spread his message around this time, that is, 2,500 years ago. He was a Kshatriya prince of the Lichavis, a group that was part of of the Vajji Sangh, about which you read in chapter 5. At the age of 30, he left home and went to live in a forest. For 12 years, he led a hard and lonely life, at the end of which he attained enlightenment. He taught a simple doctrine. Men and women who wished to know the truth must leave their homes. They must follow very strictly the rules of Ahinsa, which means not hurting or killing living beings. All beings, said Mahavir, long to live. To all things, life is dear. Ordinary people could understand the teachings of Mahavir and his followers because they used Prakrit. There were several forms of Prakrit used in different parts of the country and named after the regions in which they were used. For example, the Prakrit spoken in Magadh was known as Magadhi. Followers of Mahavir, who were known as Jains, 
had to lead very simple lives, begging for food. They had to be absolutely honest and were especially asked not to steal. Also, they had to observe celibacy and men had to give up everything, including their clothes. Page number 62 It was very difficult for most men and women to follow these strict rules. Nevertheless, thousands left their homes to learn and teach this new way of life. Many more remained behind and supported those who became monks and nuns, providing them with food. Jainism was supported mainly by traders. Farmers who had to kill insects to protect their crops found it more difficult to follow the rules. Over hundreds of years, Jainism spread to different parts of North India and to Gujarat, Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. The teachings of Mahavir and his followers were transmitted orally for several centuries. They were written down in the form in which they are presently available at a place called Vallabhi in Gujarat about 1500 years ago. See map 7 at page number 105. Jan The word Jan comes from the term Jin, meaning conqueror. Why do you think the term Jin was used for Mahavir. The Sangh Both the Mahavir and the Buddha felt that only those who left their homes could gain true knowledge. They arranged for them to stay together in the Sangh, an association of those who left their homes. The rules made for the Buddhist Sangh were written down in a book called Vinay Pitak. From this we know that there were separate branches for men and women. All men could join the Sangh. However, children had to take the permission of their parents and slaves that of their masters. Those who worked for the king had to take his permission and debtors that of creditors. Women had to take their husband's permission. Men and women who joined the Sangh led simple lives. They meditated for most of the time and went to cities and villages to beg for food during fixed hours. That is why they were known as bhikkhus and bhikkhunis. The Prakrit word for renouncer is beggar. Page number 63 They taught others and helped one another. They also held meetings to settle any quarrels that took place within the Sangh. Those who joined the Sangh included Brahmins, Kshatriyas, merchants, labourers, barbers, courtesans and slaves. Many of them wrote down the teachings of the Buddha. Some of them also composed beautiful poems describing their life in the Sangh. List at least two ways in which the Sangh described in this lesson was different from the one mentioned in Chapter 5. Were there any similarities? On this page, a picture is shown. It's a cave hollowed out in the hills. This is a cave in Karli, present-day Maharashtra. Monks and nuns lived and meditated in these shelters. Monasteries To begin with, both Jain and Buddhist monks went from place to place throughout the year, teaching people. The only time they stayed in one place was during the rainy season when it was very difficult to travel. Then their supporters built temporary shelters for them in gardens, or they lived in natural caves in hilly areas. As time went on, many supporters of the monks and nuns, and they themselves, felt the need for more permanent shelters 
and so monasteries were built. These were known as Vihar. The earliest Vihar were made of wood and then of brick. Some were even in caves that were dug out in hills, especially in western India. Page number 64 A Buddhist text tells us, Just as the waters of rivers lose their names and separateness when they flow into the mighty ocean, so are Varna and ranks and family forgotten when the followers of the Buddha join the order of monks. Very often, the land on which the Vihar was built was donated by a rich merchant or a land owner or the king. The local people came with gifts of food, clothing and medicines for the monks and nuns. In return, they taught the people. Over the centuries, Buddhism spread to many parts of the subcontinent and beyond. You will learn more about this in Chapter 9. The System of Ashrams Around the time when Jainism and Buddhism were becoming popular, Brahmins developed the system of ashrams. Here, the word ashram does not mean a place where people live and meditate. It is used instead for a stage of life. Four ashrams were recognized. Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Vanaprastha and Sanyas. Brahmin, Kshatriya and Vaishya men were expected to lead simple lives and study the Vedas during the early years of their life. Brahmacharya. Then they had to marry and live as householders, grihastha. Then they had to live in the forest and meditate, vanaprastha. Finally, they had to give up everything and become sannyasis. The system of ashrams allowed men to spend some part of their lives in meditation. Generally, Women were not allowed to study the Vedas and they had to follow the ashrams chosen by their husbands. In what way was the system of ashrams different from life in the Sangha? What are the Varnas mentioned here? Were all four Varnas allowed to participate in the system of ashrams? Page number 65 Elsewhere, find Iran in your atlas. Zoroaster was an Iranian prophet. His teachings are contained in a book called Avista. The language of the Avista and the practices described in it are very similar to those of the Vedas. The basic teachings of Zoroaster are contained in the maxim, Good Thoughts, good words and good deeds. Here is a verse from the Zend Avesta. Lord, grant strength and the rule of truth and good thinking by means of which one shall create peace and tranquility. For more than a thousand years, Zoroastrianism was a major religion in Iran. Later, some Zoroastrians migrated from Iran and settled down in the coastal towns of Gujarat and Maharashtra. They were the ancestors of today's Parsis. Imagine, you want to go to listen to one of the preachers who lived about 2,500 years ago. Describe your conversation with your parents as you try to persuade them to let you go. Key words Tanha, Prakrit, Upanishad, Atma, Brahma, Ahinsa, Jain, Sangh, Bhikkhu, Vihar, Monastery, Ashram, 
Let's recall. 1. Describe the ways in which the Buddha tried to spread his message to the people. 2. Write whether true or false. A. The Buddha encouraged animal sacrifices. B. Sarnath is important because it was the place where the Buddha taught for the first time. C. The Buddha taught that karma has no effect on our lives. D. The Buddha attained enlightenment at Bodh Gaya. E. Upanishadic thinkers believed that the Atma and Brahma were ultimately one. Page number 66 3. What were the questions that Upanishadic thinkers wanted to answer? 4. What were the main teachings of the Mahavira? Let's discuss. 5. Why do you think Anagha's mother wanted her to know the story of the Buddha? 6. Do you think it would have been easy for slaves to join the Sangha? Give reasons for your answer. Let's do. 7. Make a list of at least 5 ideas and questions mentioned in this lesson. Choose 3 from the list and discuss why you think they are important even today. 8. Find out more about men and women who renounce the world today. Where do they live? What kinds of clothes do they wear? What do they eat? Why do they renounce the world? Some important dates. Upanishadic thinkers, the Jain teacher Mahavir and the Buddha, about 2,500 years ago. Writing down of the Jain text, about 1,500 years ago. The chapter 6. Ends here. Narrator Babla Kochar. Producer Vimlesh Chaudhary. Presented by CIET NCERT New Delhi, India.